Hi, I'm Mary Poplin with Boris FX, and today we're going to turn this plain acrylic sheet into a high-tech screen insert, and we're going to put screens on our background green screen shot as well. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a new composition from scratch, and we're going to go to our effects and presets, and I'm going to grab Primat Studio and drag and drop it right onto my clip. Because the first thing we want to do is pull this green screen so I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now we have this click to auto analyze button, and Primat Studio will do its best to pull this green screen. Now that auto-analyze probably over-analyzed the shot a little bit. So what I want to do is instead of doing that, let's go to Edit, um, Undo Change Effect Value. What I want to do is I want to use this UI, and I'm going to actually go ahead and just pull my color using a rectangular sample and clicking and dragging. Just like that. Now what's nice about this is I can show my final matte. And I can see what this looks like. I can just see whether or not I need to clean my foreground and background. So we're going to clean the background a little bit by dragging over our problem areas, just like this. And then we'll clean our foreground areas by clicking Clean Foreground, just like this. And what we end up with is a nice, soft green screen pull of our background screens. And you can see my animated plate behind everything. We don't want to actually use that plate. We want to use something else. So let's grab our fish and our frog, and we'll drop those on these screens, and I'll show you how we do that. Let's duplicate our layer by hitting Control D, and delete Primat Studio off of it. And we'll call this Screen Left. We'll duplicate it again, and call this Screen Right. So we've got our green screen over the top, and we've got our screen left and screen right. So for screen left, let's go ahead and launch Mocha. So we find Mocha in our effects and presets, and we drag that right over to screen left, and we're going to launch Mocha. And there is actually a mild movement to those screens in the background, so I need to make sure that the area I track is a good area for getting data. So I'm going to just select this small area down here, and I'm going to bring this corner in so that we don't hit the hand as it moves through the shot. So let's go ahead and use our Add to X-Blind tool and make sure that hand doesn't touch. Now we're going to turn our Surface tool on, and notice we're aligning the Surface tool to the screen, but we're tracking down here, and that's because this is relative data. If I tried to track the whole screen, there's just way too much stuff in the way of this screen to get a good screen track. So we're going to track a similarly moving planar area in order to get a good track for this screen. Now, I'm actually not going to track anything but translation, because we actually don't need scale rotation, shear, or perspective. There's not a lot of perspective happening in this shot. Let's go ahead and crank the minimum percent of pixels used all the way up, because we are tracking a very untextured area, and we're going to hit Track Forward. Because Mocha is a texture tracker, we need to hang on to as much texture as possible. And because this is a very blurry background, we're going to crank this value up to get a more accurate track. With many tracking programs, this is called offset tracking, but in Mocha it's just tracking. We tell you to think cleverly about how you track. Because with Mocha, you're tracking what's inside the shape, and the surface tool is what the track is doing. So this is where the track is looking, and this is what the track is doing. So I'm happy with that track. So I'm going to go over here to Insert Clip, and I'm going to say Insert Layer, save this, and close it. Now inside of my Module Renders, I'm going to check my render box, Insert Composite, well, I'm going to do Insert Cutout, actually. So I'm going to go to my Insert Layer, and I'm going to select my Fish X-Ray. Maybe my Frog one, actually. Frog X-Ray. With that done, I'm going to copy Mocha and go to Screen Right. On Screen Right, I'm going to paste my Mocha file, and you can see it still has Frog X-Ray. That's okay. We're going to go into Module Renders, and we're going to select Fish X-Ray. Now, I'm going to launch Mocha. I'm going to take my Layer 2, turn my Surface Tool on, and move my fish over. 
And because these are on the same plane, it's the same track. It helps if you overscan the fish a little bit so that we account for any matting on the background. We're going to save this and close it. So there's my fish and there's my frog. And there's my green screen over the top. Now, I don't like the color of the frog and the fish, so we're going to make a couple of changes to the color. So let's go to our fish x-ray. Let's layer, pre-compose, and we're going to move all attributes into the new composition. Same thing for our frog. We're going to layer, pre-compose, and we're going to move all attributes into the new composition. So we've still got our proper comp selected, but now we can adjust the looks of our fish and our frog. So let's take our fish, and let's go to Brightness Contrast. We're going to use BCC Brightness Contrast. Take the contrast down by quite a bit. And for our frog, we are also going to use a BCC Brightness Contrast and take the contrast down just a little bit. I'd like to tint this a little bit, so let's go to our Layer, New, Solid, and I'm going to select this color from our background screen. Hit OK, and I'm going to cut this solid and paste it and set it as a let's do a hue and then let's duplicate this one more time and let's multiply it just a little bit we don't want it to be that dark we will actually do overlay we'll do an overlay and we'll take this down by quite a lot so like 40 so now we have this blue gray fish using the same color blue from our comp and we'll just control copy and paste these in both our x-rays. So now when we go back to our comp, we have these nice matching blue backgrounds for our x-rays. Now the reason I wanted to make these kind of bright is because I'm going to put a foreground acrylic screen over the top, so let's show you how we do that. We're going to duplicate our original layer, and we're going to call this screen insert. For screen insert, we're going to select Mocha, grab Mocha Pro, drop it right onto our clip, and launch Mocha. A lot of times users for this kind of screen would just take a big square and draw it around the area they're trying to track. That's not going to give you the best results. The best way to track something this complicated is actually come in here and track the edges of the object. And that's because the entire surface is reflective. Mocha is a texture tracker, so anything it reads as texture is going to be what it's tracking. And if you give it a lot of information like animated hands, animated backgrounds, reflections over the top, Mocha is going to try to stick onto those areas because that's the kind of data that Mocha finds delicious. We're going to take our surface tool and we're going to align it to our screen. We don't do this for Mocha, we do this for us. This is so we can see what our track is doing, because remember, the shape is where the track is looking, and the surface tool is what the track is doing. It's also the representation of your corner pin. So now we're going to track this. We're going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, because we need to. And we're going to crank this value up to 100%, because this is kind of a difficult track. And now what we're going to do is we're going to call this green track foreground, and we're going to hit track forwards. All right. Let's click our thumbnail views on, and I'm going to make sure that this lines up just perfectly with the edges of the screen, just like that. Now we're going to scroll to the end of our shot and see if it's still dead on our corners. And it actually does slip just a little bit. You can see here and here. I'll zoom in so you can see. So we start off right on the edge, and when we end, we're actually a little bit off the edge. Same thing down here at the bottom. We start off perfectly on the edge, and we end up encroaching on the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll use Adjust Track to fix that. Even though it's a very small adjustment, it's good to know how to use Adjust Track to fix problems like this, even if they're a little bit of drift. And we want to make sure our surface tool is as perfect as it can be, because we're going to use these edges as our finding points. So in Adjust Track, we're going to say Set Master All for all four of these corners even though I can't really see where the corner is. You see there's no hard detail for me to find on the master frame. That's okay, because we're going to use the edge of the surface tool as our guide. So now let's scroll all the way to the end of the shot, and let's just move our little control point in and in, just like that. And we'll take this one down like a hair. All right, so that's our new adjusted track, and it looks a lot better you can look at the thumbnails to see if it's sliding. If it looks like it's staying pretty still, 
It's pretty good. All right, that's good enough for me. Now I have a couple of things that I want to do here. The first thing that I want to do is I want to turn this track off. So we'll t turn the gear off. That's the action item in Mocha. The gear means that we're tracking, so we don't want to track anymore. We're going to hide it and we're going to lock it. And that's going to be our base track for everything in the shot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my new magnetic tool, new one with some of the latest versions of Mocha, and I'm going to, to follow the edge of this acrylic screen. And Mocha's doing a pretty good job of finding the edges. Anywhere that it doesn't do a good job of finding the edges, I'll just make a new control point. All right, and what I can do here is I can select my magnetic tool and I can take the detail down a little bit so there's not so many points. And then if I still want to get rid of more points, I can delete them manually like this to get rid of any problem points. And this will allow me to very quickly correct my shape. And if it seems like I'm being picky, it's because this is a really important shape because this is going to determine how I sell my shot. So we're going to call this our screen insert, and we're going to link this under layer properties to screen insert foreground. It's very important to check the adjusted track checkbox to make sure that my track is actually linking to my adjusted track. And so now my screen is perfectly tracked and perfectly rotoed throughout my scene. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same magnetic tool and draw some points around these fingers because I don't want to do hand roto. We're going to do that same thing where we name it. We're going to call this fingers. I'm actually going to delete these little keys right here. There we go. That looks better. We're going to call these fingers and we're going to link these to our background track just like that. And we'll do any corrections if we need to and it looks like we do need to. If you're using the new version of Mocha, you can use option S to snap it to the edges as well. And so now we have Roto for the fingers. So for my screen insert, I'm going to make sure that I do a little bit of overlap on my screen, but not much. So we want to overlap the Roto by just a couple of pixels so that we give it enough to work with. And we're going to hit Insert Clip, Insert Layer in the drop-down menu in Layer Properties. We're going to save this and close it. Inside of our module renders, we're going to do Insert Layer, X-Ray Slides, um, we're going to do insert cutout and render. And there's my x-ray over the top. But I noticed some problems. It's a hard edge. It's not respecting my roto, and we don't have motion blur on it. So let's go ahead and launch Mocha. All right, so back in Mocha, we're going to go to the insert tab. And instead of using all foreground layers, I'm going to use the mat for my screen insert. For my mat for my screen insert, I'm actually going to use my motion blur I'm going to use my Uber key to make sure that motion blur is applied to my entire shape. And I'm going to apply motion blur to my mat itself so that when the mat moves, Mocha calculates the motion blur for the mat, which is different than the motion blur for the insert, which we also want to apply. We want to apply motion blur for the insert right here in the insert under render motion blur. So when we apply the motion blur to the RGB, we also want to make sure we apply motion blur to the mat or it's going to end up looking funny. We're going to save this and close it. And it should render back to our timeline. But if you find that it doesn't, you can always use Apply Mat. Now we need to decide how to blend this. So we're going to do Screen Insert, and we're going to do a Overlay. And Overlay is nice, but it's really highly contrasted. So I want to come in here, and I actually want to take the opacity for this down to about 40%. Mm, maybe 50%. Just like that. Now I want to take my Screen Insert and duplicate it. And I want to do a Normal blend mode, and I want to put it at like 20%. And what that will do is that will give me a nice bit of opacity so that I can still see all my brights. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add an adjustment layer. We're going to call this Glow, and we're going to use S Glow for this because we've been using the Continuum tools, but I want to show you a little bit of Sapphire. Sapphire is known for its glows and its lighting effects and its blurs, and we're going to add that glow to our shot to make sure that our screens look like they're glowing. So there's before and there's after. So that glows a lot. I might take it down to about 40% opacity. And we have one last thing we need to do, which is put the fingers back over the top. So let's go ahead and grab our um, screen insert Mocha Pro and just copy that. And let's take our original footage and let's 
edit paste that effect. And now let's actually, um, instead of doing an, um, a render, module render, we're going to leave this as it is and we're going to create AE masks. We can also just apply the mat, like if we go to our visible layers, we turn our fingers layers on and we can um, apply our mat over the top. You can have Mocha apply the mat automatically or you can actually come into the native AE space and hit create AE masks. And now my masks are on my fingers over the top. And I can even go into my shot, find my masks, and we could add like a two pixel feather to our mask as well, just to blend everything. I don't like doing straight, hard edged mats. Okay, I have one more thing I wanna do, and that's when I look at this, I used some really low res images for our frog backgrounds. So let's go to our fish comp and our frog comp. Let's do a layer, new adjustment layer, and let's do an S blur over the top. And let's do a blur of like 30. So we're gonna do an S blur and we'll do a BCC match grain. And let's take our adjustment layer and copy it and go over to our frog, paste it right in over the top. And now back in our comp, we've got a much nicer looking background. So here's our before. And here's our after. If you have any questions, you can find out more on www.boriseffects.com.